All right, everybody. We're here to talk to you today about supercharger belt tensioners, which is a really important topic when you're looking at supercharged Jag Land Rover engines. It's something that we have been paying attention to for a long time. Um, you've probably noticed that the crank pulleys on these cars come from us in two different versions. They're not set up exactly the same way, and we believe that that has to do with the tensioner assembly. Um, the way that this system here works is not ideal um, when you look at a supercharged application and you compare it to some of the other vehicles out there, like if you look at an Audi 3 liter engine, for example, you're gonna see that the supercharger uh, upper pulley actually has a substantially larger amount of belt wrap, so almost 180 degrees. When you start to drive these superchargers harder, and you're gonna do that when you put a crank pulley on, when you put an upper pulley on, and especially on the five liters with the 2300 kits that we just released, um, you're gonna put an, an awful lot more load through this belt. You're asking it to work harder, to push more air and create more load through the supercharger. It means that if there's any part of that system that isn't operating correctly or that is marginal, you're gonna start to see belt slippage. We first started to detect belt slippage on the 1900 uh, engine uh, superchargers on the five liter engines um, when we were changing both pulleys. You'll notice that we changed in the last couple of years to a grip tech upper pulley. That really helps with the slippage. The reason that we noticed it is because we developed our own proprietary data logging system. Prior to that, uh, if you're trying to data log these cars, you'll see people using things like HP tuners. It doesn't work. You can get some very, very basic data out of it. But one of the things that you can't even see effectively is you cannot see the pressure inside the supercharger. You cannot see the bypass valve uh, position. So you don't know whether it's opening or closing the bypass valve inside the supercharger. And you also cannot accurately see whether it's maintaining good boost pressure or not. We were able to see in our logs that the boost pressure was doing this. And it was doing this because this belt was slipping. This belt is not slipping here. As you can see here, if you're gonna compare these two pulleys, this one's driven off the crank. This is like the uh, cog between your wheels, between your pedals on a bicycle. So you go bigger on this one, turns the rear wheel more. This is like the rear wheel on your bicycle. So the smaller you go, the faster those screws turn for a given rotation engine. When you make this smaller, you're decreasing the amount of belt contact. You're decreasing the amount of surface area contacting the belt um, from this upper pulley. The opposite's true when you go to a bigger lower pulley. So going to a bigger lower pulley is always the first port of call. So what happens when you go smaller is that the, uh, the, in, uh, the chance of you slipping the belt under certain conditions goes up. Now, in the case of the JLR engines, it's particularly challenging because you can see what this upper idler pulley here is doing. This pulley's fixed, it's on the cylinder head here. It is actually pulling the belt up and away from the upper pulley. So why would you wanna do that? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you wanna decrease the amount of belt contact on the upper pulley when it could be here? And the reason is this tensioner and the way that they've chosen to root these things on the engine. This tensioner, uh, is actually working in this direction. So it is trying to pull up against the belt. And as the engine turns and applies load, it wants to turn that tensioner against the spring pressure this way. One thing that we noticed on these tensioners is as they get weak, particularly on the earlier cars before they changed the crank pulley offset, we were actually seeing witness marks on the body of the tensioner here from where this belt was rubbing on it. So as additional load is applied and that tensioner, which maybe isn't as strong as it was when the car was brand new, as that tensioner gets pulled into this position, the belt comes closer to the body of the tensioner, touches the body of the tensioner, which prematurely wears the belt. Also isn't able to maintain enough tension on this and you end up with the belt slipping. So what does that all add up to? Is it okay on a stock blower with our upper and lower pulley? I would say the vast majority of the time, yes. Unless your tensioner's weak and worn out, yes, it's gonna be working fine. Um, that is in particular due to the grip tech coating on the upper pulley. Um, as you go smaller, that becomes really, really critical. However, a lot of you are probably getting to the stage where your tensioner is worn out and it's time to replace it. Um, 
uh, a number of you have already purchased 2300 blower kits from us. With those, it's absolutely critical. You cannot run a 2300 blower kit on a five liter supercharged JLR engine without upgrading the tensioner. Uh, we know this through the logs. We went to the airport hundreds of times, uh, did hundreds of quarter miles, logged that. We can tell you right away, you put that on there, you don't upgrade the tensioner, that belt is gonna slip. You're not gonna get maximum boost pressure. You're only gonna know that if you're able to data log it effectively. So looking at the stock tensioner and looking at this one, Essentially not a great deal of difference externally. Mainly the magic comes from what's inside here. So inside this two piece body you have a wound spring and that spring is applying pressure torsionally as the tensioner tries to turn against the belt pressure. That spring of course is spring steel. It will wear out over time. It will become um, less effective. This tensioner offers a significantly stronger spring we fitted this to the 2300 supercharged cars uh, during, during testing and immediately solved the problem for us. So this is considered for us to be a mandatory item if you're running a 2300 blower. But for any of you out there who are at the stage where you need a tensioner replacement or you're seeing wear in your belt, you're seeing witness marks on the top of this tensioner where the belt is touching it, this is a fantastic upgrade. It is not a significant amount more than the factory item is. And in some ways, it's actually very cheap insurance uh, to make sure that you're not getting belt slippage if you're modified and you're not running the risk of having that belt touch something and fail. So these are available now on our website. They've been put into production. We're gonna be shipping them January of 2025. I highly recommend checking this out if you're one of our customers already and you're running these modifications. This is a great thing to add. It's a very simple install and it's gonna give you a lot of peace of mind. So go check those out on our website. Uh, we'll be shipping them in January.